that you're still in love with your husband. You know, I'm not gonna drag it out of you, Dimitri. If you want to shut down, that's fine. It's up to you. You go right ahead. What about my brother? What about your brother? Edmund and Alex are in love. They're together. They're together because they think that you're dead. Dixie, if I come forward, I will lose Alex again. At least I'll be at peace knowing that she's with Edmund. If I survive by some fluke of this therapy, I couldn't live without her. I know how hard it was for you to just say that. And I know how complicated it is for you to reveal yourself to Alex and Edmund, knowing what they've come to mean. I to have each other. seen them together. I know how strong their love is. But you also saw Alex alone, grieving for you. Yeah. Grieving for what she lost. And here you are rooting for Alex and me, even though I may still die. I'm rooting for you. I want you to get well. And I know you love Alex, and I'm sure that she loves you. And that's your source of strength. All right. It's time. Time for what? Continue David's therapy and fight for my life. I'm not sure I like what you're implying. And Dimitri's gone. I loved him. And I'll always miss him. But I've asked Edmund not to look back anymore, and I owe him the same. Sorry. <sighs> you know, it's strange. In the hospital just now, when I was talking about Dimitri, I felt like he was there. I just felt that he was right, right there. Sorry, I know you're a scientist. Things like this make your skin crawl. No, they don't. Really? I'm actually saying that I could feel my husband right next to me and you don't think I was hallucinating on top of everything else. You weren't hallucinating, Alex. Not at all. I think it's perfectly normal that I feel that my late husband is around the next corner at any given moment. When one loses somebody, it it takes time to not see them. Or to have your heart jump when you see the slightest resemblance. Yeah. I sometimes feel like I see him walking down the street. You know, I catch a glimpse of someone who looks like him. <laughs> it's uncanny how often that happens. Well, that's exactly why I don't think that you're... what you're feeling is crazy. Or that you're hallucinating. You're healing, Alex. And I guess, in part, you always will be. Yeah. When you lose someone without saying goodbye, it's worse somehow, if that's possible at all. You always feel like they're gonna come back. I mean, I know that's not gonna happen. I've accepted that. Sorry, just making you uncomfortable. Why would you say that? Well, because you and I, we've never got along on any level. And here I am, confiding in you. Well, during a crisis, relationships can change. What crisis? I'm reliving old wounds, that's all. Is there something you're not telling me? Oh, I'd be very curious to hear the answer to that question myself, David. No, we were just talking I about... I don't care, Alex. I know what I'm seeing. No, Erica. You really, really don't. 
a moonlit night, a secluded park bench, isn't that the height of romance for secret lovers? You're joking, right? I am as serious as I have ever been about anything. Are you following me now, Eric? You don't really think oh, that they dare you. I went looking for you. Yes, I did. At the hospital. I went looking for you. And I ran into Joe Martin in the parking lot. He told me that you were here. Well, he told me that you were both here. He obviously knew what was going on. I'm sure everyone does. I mean, no. who wouldn't? No, this is absurd. No. Well, then, come with me now, David, and explain yourself. What? Prove to me that you're not involved with her. For heaven's sake. I don't have to prove anything to you, Erica. David, go with her. No. No? Do you realize that you're making a choice? Do you? Then fine. Oh, fine. Don't let me, uh, stop you two. What was that? That was insanity. Why did you let her go? What's up with you today? Up until a few hours ago, you wouldn't have given me the time of day, and suddenly you're my confessor. You allow your girlfriend to walk off thinking that we're having an affair? What's that? Why are you so suspicious all of a sudden? I just refuse to allow her to accuse me and order me around. No, oh, Paul. You're up to something. You have an agenda, don't you? And somehow it involves me. Very good, very good. How do you feel? Oh, great. One dose, I'm cured. Ah, <laughs> oh, Dixie, I'm sorry. It, it is going to take me time to feel stronger about the decision I've made. I know, but you will. You know, I've got to go home. You gonna be okay? Yeah. Okay. Dixie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For what? For yelling at you? No, no, no. For not giving in. For making me realize that I want to live. think the worst of me, Alex. Yeah, but I'm so very often right. Fine. What is it you think that I'm doing now? I'm not sure. All right. Before Erica arrived and threw her little tantrum, you were saying that our relationship was bound to change because of this crisis that we're going through. And that makes you suspicious? Since we're not involved in anything vaguely resembling a crisis, frankly, yes, it did. Maybe I overstated it. I meant that we were working on this Prion case together, and I believe that we're at the point of making a medical breakthrough. All right. So then when Erica got here, and she was obviously troubled by the fact that we were out here alone together, she asked you to go with her, mm -hmm. and you didn't. You stayed with me. Why? Give me some credit, Alex. I brought you here to get some fresh air. You were upset. I didn't need you, David. She clearly did. Erica needed what she always needs, for me to drop whatever I'm doing to prove to her that she takes precedence in my life. I just refused to go another round. Oh. So I was being used to help extricate you from this relationship with Erica. You know what? Break up with your girlfriend on your own time. I'm not trying to break up with Erica. I love her. For your information, I asked her to marry me just a few days ago. So you think that by refusing to do what she asks, you're going to make her less needy? I'm trying to establish some boundaries with Erica to make her realize that the world does not revolve around her. I don't think you'll live long enough. 
very funny. <laughs> I know she's demanding, and I would love to be able to give her everything I possibly can. But? But I simply cannot cater to Erica's every whim. I don't want that kind of a relationship. Is that the kind of relationship you have with Edmund? No, of course it isn't. And how about with Dimitri? Would you have twisted yourself into a pretzel for him? If it could have saved his life? Yeah, I would have. Say that again. I'm gonna fight this disease, and I wanna live. Are you sure? Because if you do, you might actually have a chance at recovery. From this moment on, Dixie, it's a go. Really? You're really ready to cooperate? Let's get David in here right now. Okay. I'm gonna go see if he's in his office. Um, so, did you find him? No, he was not in his office. Dixie, we have to find him. I've got to let him know that I'm ready to do all that he asks of me. All right, well, um, let's start making some calls. Calls? Here's the telephone. Yes. <laughs> I assure you, Alex, I'm not using you to influence my relationship with Erica one way or the other. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. All I need from you is your help with the Stanford case. Priyan is your area of expertise, not mine. Mm. You know, it really has gotten cold for August. Maybe there's a storm coming in. Here. No, 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 no. Come on, take it. It's dropped about 15 degrees since we've been out here. Okay. You know something? I'm gonna go, uh, go get a drink of water from the fountain. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. David Hayward's jacket. Hello? Hello, so is someone there? Hello? Hello? <gasps> oh, Alex, hi, it's Dixie. David? Hang on a sec. Oh, David, it's, yeah. it's Dixie I answered for you. I hope you don't mind. Oh, um, yeah, no, no problem. Hello, Dixie? David, hi, it's Dixie. Um, listen, Dimitri wants to see you right away. He says he's ready to get actively involved in his recovery. It's very good, Dixie. Thank you. Do you have to go back to the hospital? No, no, that was just, uh, Dixie. She was letting me know that she was leaving for the evening. I'm gonna go try and track down Erica. I'm sure she's cooled down by now. I think that's a very good idea. Do you need a lift to the car? No, thanks. I think I'm gonna stay out here for a little longer. Okay. You don't need this? No. You think we'll hear from Stanford again tonight? Well, maybe in the morning. I wouldn't worry until then. I can't help it. The case reminds me so much of Dimitri. You think he has a wife, family? is 3,000 miles away, Alex. And we're merely consulting. I'll see you in the morning. Okay.